<clears throat> hey, what's up, everyone? It's about that time that you join us right about now on this afternoon's live stream. I see you, everyone. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for keeping time. I'm happy that you are here. You're my early birds. What's up? What's happening? Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are streaming from. I appreciate you for coming. So my guest is getting ready. My guest is going to be showing to us anytime. So guys, just give it some time, like 10 minutes. She's getting ready. She will be joining us right away from Mauritius. So make sure that you don't miss. Please share this on your social media. Share this with your friends. Share it on YouTube if you're in position two. And let's have an amazing time here. But otherwise, guys, thanks so much for joining. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming through. And you know how we do it every single day of the week. But I appreciate you beyond measure. Thanks for coming through. So guys, don't worry, I'm just trying to share myself out so that we um, can have more people on board. That's why you see me a little bit on my phone. So guys, I appreciate you for coming through. I see you. Keep joining. Keep joining and let's have an amazing time here. So guys, my guest is just joining in a second. Please give her some time. She's joining us from Mauritius. And her name is Nancera CC. So be ready, be ready to catch her. She has an amazing stuff out there and that's why you need to be right here. I see everyone, guys. Keep joining, keep joining. We're getting ready.
Oh, hi, CC. What's up? Hi, hi, hi. What's up? How are you doing? Doing good things. I'm just trying to set up to see where the sun wants to hit me. Maybe I can put that open there. Okay, let's see if we put this over here. One second. Yeah, keep getting ready, keep getting ready. When you're ready, you let me know. Okay, six degrees. Um, I think I'm almost ready. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, that's much better. Is it like, oh, it's paused. Yes, yes, Hello? I see you. Yeah. Hello. Okay, yeah, it's perfect now. It's okay. Okay, it's perfect now. Yeah. What's up? How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. How's Mauritius? I don't know if you're best. I'm just presuming. How's everything? I see you. Mauritius is lovely. It's lovely. Thank you. Eric couldn't get better. Oh, oh I, I I mean, I always enjoy your shorts. I always enjoy your shorts. I've been for you for about um, five months on IG, and um, you're just doing an amazing job. You keep saying. Oh, it seems your network is a little bit poor. What's happening? Uh, I don't think it's my network. Let me just check my bandwidth, but I don't think it's mine. Because this side, I'm very clear. You first maybe check and let me know. Yeah, it's fine. It's full buzz. My network should be fine. Oh. Yeah. So, but you, um, are you getting me? Like, is my... Is my sound okay? Yeah, you are to... breaking, but now you're fine. You keep breaking a fine. bit. I don't know why. Yeah, you still break a little bit. I don't know why, but okay, that's better. Yeah, all is fine. I think. I think we're ready to get started, right? Yeah. Oh, so what's up? Like, um, um, first things first, like, um, I mean, you want to tell the viewers, if whoever is watching us right now, like, who are you? What do you do basically? Where are you based? Where are you born from? How do you join fitness? Like, such kind of stuff. Okay. Well, my name is Nansara CC. I turn 28 next week on Friday. I'm a Ugandan, born and raised. I'm based in Kampala. I've only been in Mauritius for eight months now because I'm stranded due to the pandemic. And um, I've always been into fitness because of my dad. He was always an active person. He went to the gym 
I think six times a week. So every morning I had to wake up to prepare his gym bag. And that's kind of something that started growing on me. I've always liked being active. Not in a way like I would compete in school. I tried doing that and I failed miserably. So that's not exactly my thing. But, you know, just being active, making sure your body's in, you know, good, healthy shape, trying out things like splits, things like that. So naturally I've been active because of the influence from my dad. And then I got into tennis when I joined university and I found that I liked it so much. And then in 2015, I had a terrible car crash that almost cracked my chest, but I, luckily I was wearing a seat belt that held me back. And because, you know, doctor gave me orders to be on bed rest and then I had to do some physiotherapy. But then around the same time, my yoga teacher moved to Kampala from China and she recommended yoga. But obviously, I first had to get clearance from my physio, to which she said, yeah, yoga is brilliant. Try it. And ever since then, I've never looked back. Like yoga got me from such a bad place. You know, when you're naturally an active person, being on bed rest, because of an accident it's just not physical damage it's going to have you know trauma on you mentally because you know you have to be down and then you know the whole incident how it happened it's very freaky so yeah that's how i got into yoga and i just did not stop then 2018 it was really intense the relationship i had with yoga was really intense and you know there was a demand for it in Kampala. everyone would ask me can you teach me can you do this so I was like, why not get certified and, you know, start providing the service because people are asking for it. So then I went to India in the summer, 2018, July, and I did yeah. my yoga teacher training for one month in Rishikesh, which is the world yoga capital. It's where yoga started from, the initial teachers. And then after that, I just went on a healing journey in India with a backpack. And, you know, I just enjoyed it so much. Everywhere I would go, I would just practice yoga and, you know, just enjoy everything. So, yeah, when I oh, went back great, to Kampala, um, I kept I mean, teaching and, yeah, up to now. You know, you said that you were 28, but um, I was thinking, like, you look like you're 18. So I'm just thinking, oh, like... Thank you. <laughs> what's keeping you? Yeah, like, I couldn't be, like, you're, you're 28. Whoa, 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 back up. I'm 27. I turn 28 next week. I'm 27, okay? Oh, my God. Okay, it's just incredible. I mean, no one could actually believe that. Trust me. Well, um, to be honest, okay, there's the genes, you know, where you're like, oh, yeah, you know, we all kind of look like someone we are related to. But also, I don't... I don't just rely on that. I do yoga almost every day. You know, yoga clears your head. It, you know, you just live. Of, of course, you're going to be stressed, but it's managed. And, you know, the less stressed you are, the younger you are, because, you know, your body is not like getting wrinkles and all these things. Then I do drink a lot of water. And honestly, I eat a lot of fruits. I do eat fruit. I do drink water. I take care of my skin. I wear sun protection. You know, I do my yoga, I go on walks, like I keep myself lively and most of all I keep an open mind. Like I interact with younger people, with older people, you know. Yeah. And mosquitoes. Oh, oh my god, like this is so interesting because um so when you got into yoga, was it like kind of like um a healing process from your previous car crash or you just got into yoga just because um, you're just trying to see how you can venture into fitness and all that. So was it like um, focusing on your healing process from the car crash or you just went into it just for you to get started with fitness? So um, honestly, I first heard about yoga, I think, when I was about 12 or 13 years. But that time there were yoga balls and, you know, just something I knew that yoga is something you do with a ball. I didn't really know about it. But then fast forward to, um, I think, 2014, I saw people doing these things on Instagram and I was like, what's that? And then I found out it was yoga. So maybe before I had gone like two, three yoga classes and... To be honest, it wasn't that hard for me because already I'm a fitness person. Like I do tennis, I would do my push-ups and all these things. So when I went to the yoga class, it wasn't like very difficult for me, although the flexibility wasn't there. But anything that required strength, I was so good. 
But when I really, really got into it was after the, the car crash. So I had already been introduced to yoga before, but when I actually started using it for my personal benefit was after the car crash. And only later in 2018, so this is from 2015, 16, 17, it was just personal practice. Only later in 2018 did I actually decide now I want to teach yoga, you know, I want to see how I can leverage this beautiful practice to help others who might be in challenging situations. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's really, really great. So, I mean, to someone outside who just hearing yoga for the first time, just the word yoga for the first time, like, what is yoga all about? Like, how do they get started with yoga? They simply see the poses maybe, but they really don't know that it's even yoga. So what is it all about this thing called yoga? So yoga, the word yoga originates from a word called yuj in Sanskrit. Sanskrit is an, one of the oldest languages in the world, if not the oldest, and originates from India. There is a word called yuj. And yuj means joining, Y-U-J, joining. So yoga comes from yuj. So that means yoga is joining yourself back to your source whatever your source is you know personally i believe like i'm a small thing connected to a bigger thing you know i'm part of the universe and the universe is a bigger thing and i'm the smaller thing so me practicing yoga is connecting myself back to the universe you know like feeling grounded you know going into nature and practicing from there it just makes me feel grounded and connected and then like before the world affected you with you know daily events activities struggles like who am i before any of this and practicing oh. yoga is yeah so basically it's a practice of connecting yourself back to your source whatever your source is to some people it's god other people it's the universe so whatever wherever you think you come from the practice of yoga connects you back and how it does that is through the physical movement which i think is what most people know the things you see on my instagram the poses because for you to be able to connect back to your source to be able to feel like you're in that zen situation where you feel like nothing is affecting you, no stress, no work, nothing. Your body has to be physically fit. Otherwise, there is no way you're going to be able to sit or stay still in one place to focus if your body is not physically fit. Eventually, you're going to get tired of that position. So, yeah, oh, I, I hope I've answered your I really question. What I really understand what you're saying. So, um days ago if not yesterday it was like the mental word mental health day kind of and um mm -hmm. is a strong association between yoga and mental health we just elucidate a little bit on that yes so like i was saying the practice of yoga when you do yoga you're connecting yourself back to your source and by doing this you literally push everything out you know all this stress that the world is bringing to you you know friends strangers work so how that is related to mental health is because one of the limbs of yoga or the branches of yoga is asana which is the physical movement moving your body around really like it uh speeds up the flow of oxygenated blood in your system which you know flushes out the toxins and you know everything that's stressing you it just makes your mind feel clear for a moment so if you're having like mental struggles like depression and all the things, you just feel clear and that one, you, you just feel so much better. And then the practice of meditation, which is also another branch of yoga, it just helps you put in focus what's really important. Like, let me say you're stressed because of work, maybe you're anxious, you know, people are, especially now, people are really stressed with the pandemic, the future is not certain, you're just like, okay, what's happening next? What's happening next? Yoga just helps you focus in the moment and understand that you have no control over this. So there is no point to stress about it, to be anxious about it. Why not focus your energy on something you have control about? And once you understand that as a human being and start, you know, directing your energy in the on the right things you stop being stressed about things you can't control because you say it but once you actually understand it that i cannot control this it's beyond my control there is no point yes. stressing about it then you don't stress about it so yoga puts that into focus it puts that statement into focus and reducing stress oh and that's also, 
Yes. One thing I want to add is that uh, some people get stressed because of work. They have to meet deadlines and all these things. They feel like, oh my God, how am I going to do this? So yoga in- improves your mental abilities and performance. When you do yoga, it clears your mind and, you know, it focuses on what matters. And sometimes that's, you know, better performance at work, you know, thinking more clearly. And in so doing that, you end up being able to meet deadlines and then there's nothing to stress about or be depressed about. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's like great news. And for people who are always stressed out there about work, about relationship, about stuff basically in life, and you just have a natural relieving mechanism, and that's basically yoga. So I yeah. really think this is really, really great for someone out there to actually get started with yoga. But also, I've wanted to ask, I've always wanted to ask this question. I always see a lot of people involved in yoga compared to men, like who should do yoga and who shouldn't do yoga? Okay. This is how you check whether you should do yoga. Do you breathe? Do you have a brain? Then yeah, you should do yoga. If you tick off those two, you should do yoga. Yeah, so so my question is always like, I mean, it seems that I think yoga is for women. If you look at uh, the people who are involved so much in yoga, I mean, these are yeah. women compared to the male yeah. counterparts. What actually um, invites that? What makes it that way? So is it just because men are not informed about yoga? What is it yeah, all about? pretty much. That's it. That's it. It's like, you know, there was a time before when there was, you know, like gender roles where women had to stay home while men had to go work. But now the world is changing. Women are like, you know, we can work, we can do this. It's the same thing with yoga. There was always that thing like, oh, yoga is feminine, it's for women, which wasn't true. But now it's all changing. People are realizing that, no, actually, yoga is for everyone. So it it was just this unmission myth that it's just for women. But no, it's for everyone. As long as you breathe and you have a brain, you can do yoga. End of story. Um, so talking about breathing, because someone might think, I mean, wherever they are, even right now, they are breathing. So mm-hmm. how is breathing in yoga, like, how is it different from, like, the normal breathing? Because I understand some people have shallow breathing, but they are unable to actually establish that they actually have shallow breathing. Yeah. Oh, my God, you actually did your homework. That's impressive. So um, <laughs> <laughs> one other branch of yoga, like I've told you, there is asana, which is the physical movement. Then there is meditation. And another branch of yoga is pranayama, which covers the breathing bit. So normally as a human being, if you see a baby, a newborn baby, the way they breathe, they breathe on the inhale, the belly comes out like you're blowing a balloon. And on the exhale, the belly goes in. That is supposed to be the normal breathing. It's called abdominal breathing. But you find that due to, you know, maybe bad sitting posture, moving around, you know, stress, life events, your breathing changes to short breath or sometimes referred to as thoracic breathing, which is the breathing you do when you're exercising. It's not bad breathing. It's just not the kind of breathing you should, do on a, you should be doing on a day-to-day basis because it's very short and it exhausts a lot of energy. You find that the other animals that breathe like that, a dog, maybe rats, um, birds, and you know what? They have a short lifespan because of the breathing is too fast. The heart is going so fast. It pumps really fast. It's going to go out of service very fast. The normal breathing we should be doing is the abdominal breathing. The breath, When you do abdominal breathing, your breath becomes really slow. Your lungs build endurance. It slows down your heart rate. A slower heart rate means that a longer lifespan. That's why you see animals like elephants, taught us they have a really long lifespan they move slow they breathe slow so yoga breathing a branch of yoga is the kind of practice you do to you know to improve your lifestyle and have a longer lifespan also breathing is an exercise for your respiration your respiratory system especially the lungs when you do short breath your lungs are really huge almost like a balloon when you do short breath, you're not fully utilizing the lungs. Like you're only using half of them. And that means your lungs don't have the capacity. But when you do longer breath, you're utilizing all the lungs. And then because you fill up all the lungs to the bottom, that means they're going to be able to produce enough oxygen to reach organs that normally you wouldn't reach. Because, you know, there are organs all the way down here, your reproductive system, intestines and all this. They need freshly oxygenated blood 
to function normally. And when they function normally, that means you're gonna be healthy. If they don't function normally, that's when you see they're going to start failing, the reproductive organs are dormant. And in some people, you know, this could even cause barrenness. They're like, oh my, why can't I do this? And you know, there's nothing wrong with you aside from the fact that they're just dormant. And they're dormant because they're not getting oxygen. And they're not getting enough oxygen because you're not breathing right. Yet if you just practice breathing, which is a branch in yoga, then everything could be fine. Oh, I think I, I think that's really great. And some people actually they practice sort of shallow breathing in their everyday life, and they actually never yeah. realize. So I think for me, um, a deep breath or a good breath, it should, it should be the one which you take in and you feel like it's going up to your intestines, and you're able to maintain it for either three seconds or five seconds before you can take in yeah. a large breath. That's what I think. So basically, I'm talking about your. Correct. Think about yoga and stress. So I feel like every time you're doing yoga, um, you're focusing on the movement and your breathing, um, and then you shift all the attention from your stress as now to your body movements, your breathing, and which in the long run makes you forget about all the stresses um, in life. Maybe that's how I'm thinking about it. Well, you make a good point, but no. Yoga mm. is not an escape from life. Yoga should be a lifestyle. And yoga, like I said, it puts into focus what really matters and makes you accept what you cannot change. The problem is many people, when they see something they can't change, they stress about it. But what they don't realize is that you shouldn't be stressed about something you can't change because you can't change it. It sucks, but you have to accept it. So yoga puts that into focus. What you can't change, there's actually this line of, oh God, give me wine to do the things that I can change and yoga to accept the things I can't change. Like accepting things with grace. That's, that's what yoga does. Because just because something cannot be changed does not mean it's going to disappear. And it's not very practical to do something that will make you forget for like five minutes or something. And then, you know, Im immediately when you stop doing that thing, all that is going to come back, which is why, you know, people end up being alcoholics because you do some, you drink, you forget everything, but then the minute you sober up, you remember, and then you go back to drinking. No, yoga doesn't do that. Yoga helps you accept because also you can't be practicing physical movement the whole day, that's not very healthy, you know? So it's not an, an escape. It's something to help you accept what you cannot change with grace, you know, yeah. Oh, that's that's really great. So um, um, maybe um, everyone who's watching us, um, we live right now with um, Nansara Sisi, she's a Ugandan YouTuber. Um, should I call you fitness trainer or just a yoga master? <laughs> I'm a yoga teacher and travel content creator. And a travel content creator. So she has um, a YouTube channel. And Sarah CC, please, if you want all these yoga poses and exercises, please, you have to make sure that you check her channel right after here. But feel free to put all your questions. I'll put them right directly to her so that you can get home with your answers. So, um... I want, we want, I want us to talk about flexibility and mobility when it comes to yoga. So someone out there, they will see all these, you know, poses. They will call them awkward poses because they think like this can't be done on earth. So how do they get started when yoga needs a little bit of um, flexibility and, you know, mobility? Um, you don't go to yoga because you're flexible. You go to yoga to get flexible. Okay. That's why I told you, if you breathe, if you have a brain, yoga is for you. But just like anything, like a workplace, like a school, you know, like social classes in life, there is levels. Maybe you're a beginner level, there are pauses for beginners. Maybe you're an intermediate level, there are pauses for intermediate level. And then maybe you're advanced, the awkward pauses and the, you know, pauses for that as well. You start from zero you build on that and that until you get to you know an advanced level so and the thing is that yoga is proof that your body can do anything it's just because of non-practicing you know exercising certain muscles and bad sitting postures stress that tends enough the body that it cannot move in 
the ways you think it can't but your body can move in any direction if you study about muscles they elongate they contract as long as they elongate and contract they can do anything they just need practice and time oh that's that's great i mean some people out there they've been scared like how do i get started when i'm really not flexible so i'm still on yoga like um how much weight do you need to be doing yoga? Because for me, it looks like yoga is for Sorry, someone. Could you say that? I mean, like, um, um, when it comes to body weight, I mean, do you have like a set body weights or that if you're above that, you can't do yoga or you have to be this kind of um, body weight? How many kilograms, how many pounds should they be for them to get yeah. started with? They need first lose weight for them to get started on yoga, or even if they are obese or overweight, they can get started right away. Well, it depends. Can they breathe? Okay. Do they have a brain? Okay. Then they can do it. They can do yoga. If there's a brain, if there's breathing, that's all that matters. The age doesn't matter. Okay, maybe I would say if you know, it's a baby, then they really can't do much yoga because they don't understand what you're telling them. As long as someone can breathe and someone can has a brain, they can do yoga. It's for oh, that's, everyone. Uh, that's really great. And that's why I ask that because for me, basically, I'm into calisthenics, which is um, mm -hmm. a body type of training, you know? So um, for us who are doing calisthenics, we find um, the lighter you are, the easier the movements are going to become for you. The heavier you are, the difficult. So that's why I'm asking that very question. So oh, um, okay. So I see when you put it that way, I get your point. It's just like in life. Some things I'm going to find easy, maybe because of a certain advantage. Other things I'm going to find challenging. Like if you put me in a math class, I wouldn't pass swimmingly if I passed at all. Yeah. But if you put me in maybe a history class, a literature class, I would pass swimmingly. Everyone has different body struggles. Our bodies are built different. We could even start at the same time, maybe to try and do a split. Let's say we are both given equal 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, you do the split better than I do. Chances might be that you're three times, you know, like more plus size than I am. And I'm like exactly. as small as a model, but you might do it easier than I do it. We both have muscles and, you know, we both have joints. But mine might not just be, you know, as flexible as yours. There's levels to all this stuff, and it has nothing to do with body weight. Oh, that's great. Actually, that has been a worry for most people. I mean, they'll see certain poses like these poses we are meant for certain group of people or certain kind of no. people. So I think um no. I, I think thank you for actually debunking that. So everyone out there you heard from her, you can get I started. I actually know I know. I know people who are smaller than me, but they can't do certain poses because naturally their shoulders are just stiff and they, they can't, okay, they can do the poses, but they can't do them easily because the shoulders are just stiff, their shoulders are not open. And I know people who are, you know, like three times my size and they just get up like, whoo, like very easily because, you know, their shoulders are open. Personally, I struggle with a handstand because my right arm is weak, but you can't tell because there is this assumption because she's small, she's very strong and all, but my right shoulder is weak. I've been trying to do a handstand for like three years, but I still can't, I, it needs more time. And then you find someone who is like, you know, really plus size and they just do it, practice it in two weeks and they get up. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with the size. Taking of handstands, I've been trying handstands like every day for the past four months. And oh my God, I still do support handstands. And I'm like, why, why, why can't I get this? Because I feel like my shoulders right now are flexible. I feel they are more open, but I feel like my wrists are kind of still weak. So I don't know if I still need a lot of wrist mobilities, wrist training. Yeah, if you feel, if you feel your wrists are still weak, then they are weak because your body knows how to communicate to you and if that's what you're feeling it's probably because it's true and i highly recommend that's not something you should ignore take the time you take just be patient with yourself and enjoy the journey but don't rush to get there i know there can you can feel 
self-pressure from what you see on social media but remember to always stay true to yourself and you know this shouldn't be something you do to get social media gratification this is something you should be doing for yourself so even if it takes a year or whatever time it takes always always listen to your body so you keep doing that until you feel like okay my wrists are not weak anymore i've been on this handstand journey for three years but up to now, I feel like my right shoulder still needs time. And I'm not going to run out. It's going to let me take, even if it's eternity, I'm okay with that. Oh, that's, that's really great. I think everyone who is watching us right about now, you really need, um, I mean, fitness is about a journey. I mean, someone who yeah. you see crazy things are being done by someone, but you have to remember that they have perhaps yeah. spent like a day Doing this, I'm um, doing these poses. So at the end of the day, I think it's about going through all the stages, all the steps to get where you need to be. Not just jumping on stuff because you're seeing everyone doing it. So um, yeah. maybe a couple of people watching us live. Um, uh, we have Nelly Hama. She's from Kenya. She says she loves the conversation. Um, she says I want to Thank try you. my flexibility and fitness as well. We have um, Dr. Kenan Pishaw, he's based in Italy, but he's a Ugandan. So he's, he, think, um, he says, I think everyone has a weak side. Yes, that's very true. And um, we have Ryan Media, he says good stuff. So we have so many people, you know, who are streaming, um, streaming from all over the world. And oh, I'm so glad. Yes, yes, yes. So um, about different types of yoga and poses so do you have like a particular type for beginners like if you're a beginner this is what you're supposed to start with or you just jump on different types well the types of yoga have nothing to do with the poses that now let me just give you an example personally my favorite kind of yoga is hatha yoga which is the traditional yoga you get into a yoga pose you try it you come out of it whatever level you're on like most of the yoga poses have variations as a beginner you go up to here and if you feel like your body is ready to you know advance to the next level which is intermediate then you give it a try like um let me i don't know if you'll be able to see me but let me show you something here yeah we can see you okay so this is a kneeling side plank yeah so i'm going for a, a plank pose yeah on the side okay. side plank so if depending on my arm strength this is how far i can go yeah if i'm a okay. beginner if it's the first time but yes. maybe i'm a bit advanced and i can even take the leg up and then there is okay. more weight on my arm and it's okay my wrist is fine now if i'm a bit more advanced i can come all the way up to this yeah and my okay. arm is fine so that means like I'm at an advanced level, but this has to do, yes. this has nothing to do with the type of yoga. Now, if I did the same thing on the right arm, okay, yeah, I can still go all the way up, but it took me about two to three years to get there. So um, when see. you look at it that way, on the right side, I'm still beginner, and on this other arm, I'm advanced. But You're that advanced. has nothing to do with the type of yoga. So now the types of yoga, there's the traditional yoga, the Hatha yoga, where you get into a pose, you come out of it. Now, there's a, another type of yoga, which is called vinyasa yoga. This okay. one is a flow. Now, see there, I just went into the pose and came out. But in vinyasa yoga, vinyasa is a flow. I will go into maybe a downward facing dog. And okay. from there, I'll come out of it into a low lunge, then warrior okay. two, high lunge. Like, you see, it's kind of like a flow, like a dance. It's not just getting into one static pose and coming out of it so that's vinyasa but also the same poses i do in vinyasa are the same poses in hatha but it depends on the way i practice them and then there's also another type which is called ashtanga this one is named after the person who came up with it called ashtanga so that one it's particular poses that he put together that make up his whole sequence and it's called ashtanga yoga then there's so many types but it has nothing to do with the poses or the level of advancement it's just um, the principles guiding that make it that type of yoga. Um, I, I mean, yeah. that's a great news. So, um, I mean, I think someone here is, is just getting inspired to start on yoga because 
they've been hearing about yoga, how it fixes stress, how, you know, but they, they, they have no idea of how they can get started with it. And I think now they have a clear picture. They know now everyone can do yoga depending where you are, the age. Is there any age restriction, like either old age or is there age where you're supposed to start from? Or I think anyone? The oldest yogi is about 100 and something years. I'm not so sure, but she's in either late 90s or 100 and something, the oldest yogi. Oh, that's great. That's really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now putting yoga on the side. So guys, I'm I'm still insisting if you want to learn more about yoga, you have to check out her YouTube channel. She just has a a lot of amazing content. You check her out on Thank I you. all these poses out there and you'll get inspired. So uh, maybe you can tell us your channel name really quick so that someone if they want to learn more, they can go and maybe hook you up um from there. Yeah, so my YouTube channel is Nansera CC. That's N A N S E R A C C C I S S Y. Same thing on Instagram. Yeah. Same thing on TikTok. I, I, I think um, everyone should just look out for this amazing stuff. And I told you, I mean, Thank ladies, you. they're just so crazy about yoga. So that's why I, that's why my my first question was like. How come that ladies are into this thing um, compared to men? Are they just because are they? But the uh, um, talking about flexibility and mobility, is it true that ladies are more flexible than men? Well, okay. When you bring the numbers together, like generally, yes, they are more flexible women than men. But um, when you go on a person-to-person -person basis, like a guy or a woman who's more flexible, that then entirely depends on the person's body. But yeah, generally, in generalization, women are more flexible than men. Oh, so I think that one could actually explain why more of them are actually into yoga stuff um, compared to lifting and weights. That's compared because... And that's because of the myth that yoga is for women, not men. Because, like I said before, you don't go to yoga because you're flexible. You go to yoga to become flexible. And when you put it that way, then there should be more men practicing yoga than women because women are generally more flexible compared to men. Then the more men should be practicing yoga. Oh, that's that's really, really great. I myself have... Um, I just start, I, I just um, did yoga for like a month, but um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I just spent a little bit thinking like this is not my thing because I thought like it requires a lot of flexibility. So I think I just need to get started on my yoga again. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, one thing um, what we need to tell these people is um, when you join this stuff of yoga, fitness, and all that. This is not a short-term thing. This should be your lifestyle, like the way you wake up and you're a musician. So I think fitness, doing yoga, doing calisthenics, doing weightlifting, it should not just be because you're so sissy, um, she looks great. I think I want to be like her. It should be your lifestyle that you should, you should be willing to adopt and live with it for the next part of your life, not just you having short-term goals. So if you have short-term goals, it means you're probably not going to be consistent with it. You're going to hit the whole journey and you end up quitting the journey. So I really think it's about you calling this a lifestyle instead of just the body image. Absolutely. So uh, leaving yoga alone, um, I can't leave, the, I can't leave, we can't leave here when I have not put this to you when it comes to weight loss. I mean, weight loss and weight gain, it's one of the biggest topics that, um, that are on in the whole world. I mean, we have so many people are struggling with weight. Um, so um, we want to help these people lose weight because um, there's a lot of information out there on the internet. Um, so yeah. it's a bit confusing. People don't know what they're supposed to follow. They go read this on this website, go on YouTube, watch this video. They then contradicting each other. So like, which information should they take? So you as someone who has been into fitness and yoga, I mean, um, especially I'm talking to this because I always, I always get a lot of questions from ladies and I was like, the fact that I have a head right now, 
maybe she's in position to answer some of these questions. And um, it seems ladies, most of them, they are obsessed with um, belly fat. Most of them, they want a smaller waist, either they want um, big growths and all that, you understand? So yeah. um, if someone overweight, how do they get started with um, losing weight if they really want to have a perfect body or have a relative body percentage like below 15%? So first thing I want to say, don't do dieting. Cross that out. If anyone, if you tell someone you want to lose weight, if you diet, I don't recommend. Unless you're getting onto a diet that you're going to do for the rest of your life. Otherwise, if it's something right. like they're telling you do this for four months, don't, don't do it. Like, that's unrealistic. I mean... Yeah, we can't put a time limit on your life like that. Hard. You can't. Yeah, um, there are people want to use hacks. Yeah, it's no, I don't recommend. And um, secondly, if you get into a program, whatever program you're choosing from the word go, ask yourself, do I see myself doing this for the rest of my life? Always, that question should be there. If you want this, if you're saying I don't, I, I don't agree with you with using words like perfect body, but I also understand the context context in which you meant it. So, anytime you're going this, ask yourself: Do I see myself doing this for at least the next thirty years? No, then no. Try things, but always ask yourself. Do I see myself doing it for the next 30 years? And if the answer is no, then I don't recommend. Personally, I live by the 80 20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, you're going to find me like doing me. my yoga, yeah. doing my physical movement. Like yeah, it's a very good rule. Yeah. So you're going to see me doing my yoga, which is, um, you know, a lot of body movement and then meditation, you know, breathing techniques, because I feel like all these are necessary. For your body to be in good physical condition and then of course i will do some cardio cardio is very important in whatever program you get into just make sure there is cardio involved it should both be you know body toning and cardio and then that's only like 20 percent of the work 80 percent of the work is going to come from what you put into your mouth create healthy exactly. habits that can be maintained for the rest of your life Eat pizza, please. Eat pizza. Pizza is so good. Um, but don't about eat that. too much pizza, you know? Portion control. Um, Allow yourself to eat pizza. Allow yourself to, you know, to have that glass of wine. As long as it's that glass of wine, don't get into, oh, my God, I had two bottles last night. What are you doing? The alcohol will still be there the next day. The, the companies are not shutting down tonight. So just have something and stop. Same thing come, when it comes to the food as well. Same approach. Eat your food. Like have a balanced uh, diet. I don't mean this in the context. <laughs> of, Just saying. You know, you should be on a diet. And nutrients in. Carbs are good. Many people are opposed to fat. But fat is good because if you don't have fat, if you're not consuming fat, then what are you going to burn when you get to getting physical? So eat your avocado. Eat your bananas. Eat your healthy fats. Eat your fruits, stay hydrated, eat the good food, you know, eat your vegetables, balance it out. And then when it comes down to, you know, indulging, have your pizza, like, you know, have a slice or something. I, I mean, I don't know how you control your pizza portions when you're eating pizza, but just make sure that indulgency bit never goes over 20%. It should always be 20%. And 80% of the time, you're taking in the good stuff, you know, you're getting physical, you're eating your vegetables. Then 20% of the time, you're having your wine, you're having your pizza, you're going out late night, dancing. Yeah, best approach, in my opinion. Um, so basically, um, last, I think it's about two weeks when I had um, a, um, a live stream about this. And I told the people that actually eating clean is stopping you from losing weight. And everyone was asking, like, how? How does that one even happen? Um, Sissy, can you still get me? Hello? Sorry. 
Um, you can now get me. So you can now get me clearly. This is breaking. Yeah. Um, how about now? How about now? You are able to get me? Yeah, much better. Mm. Yeah. Okay, guys, wherever is okay, you can now get us, right? Yes. So I was saying that last week I had a live stream and I was telling my clients that actually eating a hundred percent is typical from losing weight. And the reason why I was telling them that is um eating in a hundred percent is not is not there in in the whole world. I mean the problem with that is you're not going to be consistent with yeah. it. So I was telling them that actually be consistent with your 80% and then 20% eat your favorite foods. I mean, go out, and enjoy your pizza, go out and enjoy your burger, but make sure that 80% you're basically eating right. And that's what I was yeah. emphasizing. And some people are actually um, saying like, that can't be true. I mean, they're advocates of clean eating, but I'm like, if you choose, um, a diet that you cannot do for the rest of your your life or 30 years from now, um, basically you can't be consistent no, no, with it. Then um, just know you're not going to get results from it because it's all about consistency. How long are you going to do this kind of diet? So I mean, I think it's about you trying to be right um, 80% and then 20% um, live your life. Because at the end of that day, you need to be sure, sure. You need to have that glass of wine. You need to go out and yeah. have... You need to have a bag. Work with so, no play makes Tom a dull boy. Exactly. So I think it's about 80% doing the right thing and then 20% enjoying yourself. And the more you realize that that's, that, that's the problem that you can be consistent with for the next 40 years, for the next 60 years, and then you get results yeah. out of it. But if you think you're going to, for example, eliminate carbs from your diet uh, because you are told you need to eliminate carbs, Trust me, your weight loss then is going to stall because you're going to hit the whole process. You're going to binge it along the way, and I think um you end up quitting. Yeah, that's very true. And I mean, I can't imagine cutting out carbs. Like, if I had to choose one food for the rest of my life, I think it would be French fries. So, <laughs> I know. So at, at, at the end of the day, me, what I think is um, it's about calories at the end of the day. So it's about um, how many calories are you taking in? How many calories are you expending at the end of the day? So I feel like our bodies, it's like, um, it's like a car and then food is your fuel, which acts as your energy. So it's like when you fill your car and then you take it at home and park it, so what happens next? But if you fill your car and you use the fuel, I think that's actually is okay. So most people, the problem we have is you want to fuel yourself a lot and then you don't want to use the fuel. So you want to, you want to overeat, you want to eat all the time, but you don't want to use the energy that you're eating from food. And I think that's where a lot of weight gain obesity is coming from for people eating more than what they need. Um, so and I've always told the people that cardio does not burn fat. Cardio burns calories, which in the end run puts you in a deficit that now your body will start you not know, helping your fat stores, burning all this fat, and you're not know, creating a consistent caloric deficit. And at the end of the day, you end up losing weight. So I always tell them, I mean, sometimes not, it's not about the foods you eat, but it's about how many calories are you eating in a day. If the calories you're eating, are they able to maintain your basal metabolic rate? Can you maintain your, your walking, your breathing, your brain function, your lung function? And if you're eating more than that and you're simply sleeping, you're simply seated, then the surplus has to be converted into fat and stored. So when you do the reverse, of course, the results. So that's what I always tell people. It's very scientific, but it's, uh, it's very good. Oh, but we're talking about that. That's why it's scientific. Um, <laughs> I'm a healthy one before I became a fitness trainer. <laughs> ah, okay. That makes sense because you kind of lost me somewhere. I'm like, what? We're talking about surplus now? And I don't know. There are a few and other words that you talked and... about. I was like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, I'm a healthy worker. 
Okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So I think really, really, most people um they are afraid of eating all these foods out there, eating their pizzas. People will quit pizzas because they want to lose weight. They will quit their burgers. But at the end of the day, when they do what it for a sad a, life, they end up, you know, binge eating in one weekend and they eat all all what they were supposed to eat like in in a month. So it really doesn't make sense because you're going to miss them. You see, um, at the end of the day, yes, no one is perfect and no one can be perfect 100%, but make sure that 70-80% do, do what's supposed to be done right and then 20% be yourself. I believe I'm perfect. Yeah. But that's because of my approach to the word perfect. I don't think there's yes. anything wrong with what I do. I don't think there's anything wrong with me getting out of bed at seven if I'm supposed to get up at six because, you know, for me, being perfect is fully functioning as a human being. And by default, a human being is not a robot. So I'm only imperfect if you're comparing me to a robot. But if you're exactly. comparing me to the functions of a human being, I believe I'm doing great. I'm perfect. I make mistakes, which is expected of a human being. Sometimes I forget, which is expected of a human being. The only way I would not be perfect if I wasn't making any mistakes, because then that's not human. So that means I'm failing my function as a, the creature I am, which is a human. So me, no one can I, tell I, me I'm not I, perfect. I, me, I am perfect. I entirely agree with you. So someone here is asking where are from, where, where is the host from? So the host is a Ugandan and from Kampara, but right now COVID situation found her in Mauritius having a good time. I don't know. Um and yeah, she's unable to eight back. months now. So she's Ugandan. Um she has a YouTube channel, she's a Ugandan YouTube vlogger, put her everywhere, she's called Nansera CC. Learn out from her. Um so basically, um, I think that's it about yoga. But um, there's some there's a friend of mine who's asking me a question. Um, okay. They are hearing the word meditation and yoga for the first time. What is the clear um, difference between meditation and yoga? Okay, so like I said before, yoga means joining yourself back to your source, and yoga has brought. Are you, I don't know what level of education you're at right now. Is it university or high school? No, I'm done with the degree. Oh, are you? Done? Um, I, if I hope, or oh, I, I like to believe everyone understands, you know, how university works. You know, you get a course that you're doing. Okay. Yeah, no. And in theory, had course units. There was economics, there was accounting, you know. There was communication and all these things. So yoga is the tourism. Meditation is the course unit, like you see communication. Then there's asana, which is the movement. Let's call that okay. economics. You know, then there's pranayama, which is the breathing. Let's call that accounting. So meditation is a branch of yoga. Or if you are in university, it would be a course unit of a course called yoga. Oh, that's great. That's great. So, um, and, and someone is telling me, asking me some question here. What is this thing about muscle mind connection, especially when it comes to yoga? How do you improve on that? Sorry, um, I didn't understand the question. Improve your muscle and mind? It's, it's exactly muscle mind connection when it comes to you doing yoga. Do you need to have, like you talked about it, about your brains, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you talked about you having a brain. And you know, for you uh, being ready to get started as long as you can breathe. So they are really asking like um, the connection and if there's a way of improving your connection between the muscle and the mind. So, and I, I mean, maybe you can elaborate on that since you are here. Um, okay, um, I'm not sure I really understood the question to be honest, but um like I said, in yoga, there are branches shown uh, asana, which is the physical movement. Asana, the physical movement, works a lot with the body. That means, you know, body tissue, which, of course, 
muscles, um, ligaments, and all these things, joints, bones, and everything. So for your brain to be able to function properly, because as you may already know, there is a link between the body and the brain. You know, the brain sends a message down to the of body, course. and that's when you're like, hand up, hand down, and all these things. So um, at the end of the day, okay, in yoga, this is how we say, you announce your body, you announce your mind, yeah? Because if you were your mind or your brain, then you wouldn't say my brain, but we say my brain. So that means it belongs to someone who is you. We say consciousness. You anoint your body, you anoint your brain, you are your consciousness. That's why you see when you're in a situation, okay, yeah, sometimes people say, oh, my consciousness told me this. But that's why you see when there are times where your brain fails you, your body fails you. But your consciousness would never fail you. Like, you don't know anything about this person, but then there's that voice in you, that consciousness that tells you to either trust or to non-trust. And it's not biased by anything. It just like you when someone asks you, oh, but how did you trust this person? Like, I don't know. I just felt it was right. That's you, you, the consciousness. So in yoga, that's what you are. And now to improve the body. Sorry, I, I feel like I kind of got away from the question, but I felt like that was something you needed to know before I go ahead. So in order to, sorry, uh, is that in your background, the noise? Yeah, it's okay, but sorry about that. Oh, oh, okay. So, sorry, I thought maybe it was someone asking a question. So, um, in order for you to improve your muscle function, it's through the course unit of yoga, which is asana, physical movement. In order for you to improve your brain function, it's going to be through meditation. But in order for you to be able to focus mentally, it's to be in a good, healthy condition, in a good physical condition, which is why and then, in order for you to focus, you need another course you need of you practice breathing and asana movement, both of which are necessary to achieve, you know, a good meditative state. Because uh, actually, when you're really good at it, you find yourself like your body is still. And the only way it can be still is because of consistent asana practice. And then you can't even feel your breath, but the breath is going back and forth. And this is because your lungs are at a point where they've built enough endurance to take in a lot of air and out without, you know, your brain having to be there to monitor them. Take it in, take it out and all. And then when those two are in a very good harmony, then you'll be able to meditate better, which you know improves the brain function because this is meditation is pretty much an exercise of the mind where you can actually step out of your mind and you see it as an organ that it is. Sorry, your brain and you see it for the organ that it is. Your consciousness is perfectly separated. Your consciousness controls your mind as opposed to which most people are right now, where your mind controls everything. Your mind goes where it, it does and it controls you. I hope, I, I feel like I didn't answer that question well. I'm very yeah, sorry. You, you, I'll make a proper post about it on my channel. I, 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 think, I, I think someone now has a, um, a, a good picture about uh, meditation and yoga and about mind and breathing. So I think you explained perfectly well. Then, then there's a, a hilarious concern right here. Um, someone is saying, can you still get me? Yes. Someone saying that someone once told them that yoga tends to increase sexual desire and then you tend to think of that most of the time. How true is that? Maybe you can debunk it. No, it's not true. Oh, so that's... But that was their yoga major concern, actually. But yoga does improve your sexual performance. Oh, so for both yeah. sexes or for... Of course, for both sexes. Because, you know, sex is not just physical. Sex is mental as well. I... Yes. So yoga, through... Okay, there is... Um, 
um, uh, a meditation called uh, chakra alignment. These are your okay. energy sources and they're along your spine, like, you know, from the root chakra, you know, all the way up to your head to the crown. So these are all energy channels that they is a practice where you activate and then the root is best is activated is where the sexual energy is found or actually all the energy of your body that's where it's rooted from so um you can by practicing you know chakra chakra activation or alignment especially the root chakra you're awakening your energy and that includes the sexual and um, maybe adding on what you've said, since um, minus the mind, minus your central nervous system, you know, uh, being part of your um, of the system that uh, um, your, your autonomic nervous system, your parasympathetic nervous system, when it comes to sexual life, I think also strengthening your muscles, your hypocoxidial muscles, your ligaments, and all that. These are the muscles involved in that kind of activity. I think in one way or yeah, the other. Yeah, for sure, on a physical level. Oh, okay. Yeah, because sex is a uh, physical and mental. So yeah, on a physical yeah. level, of course, the asana movement. Yeah, that you know, like I said, it improves your sex. But then on a mental level, which for me I think is more important than the physical, quite frankly. Uh, on a mental level, the chakra alignment and awakening, it really changes. It makes such a huge difference. Oh, it and, makes and, and you so, very present in the moment. And yeah, it's, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because um, if you look at most people, um, especially the aging, I mean, all people have hit their mid 30s, mid 40s, you know, with a lot of challenges going into their lives. I mean, um, their brains tend to be off, think about the stressors in life. You know, so if you don't get off the stressors and your mind's, you know, all focused on stressors and fixing on stressors, when it comes to your sexual life, if you've not really been um, training your mind and you think it's just physical, I think it's still going to uh, affect your performance here and there. Exactly. That's why for me, I'm saying it's more mental than it is physical. It's very, very yeah. mental. For you to get the pleasure, it's very mental. And yeah, yoga surely does improve the quality. So what's up? What's happened to your background? What's what's happening to your lighting? I don't know. Is oh, it it's dark? getting dark. Yeah, I I thought we well, were. I think, I think we agreed to do this for an hour. Yes, and, yeah. I think I need to let you go. I think I need to let yeah. you go. That's why I'm asking. It's getting dark that side. Yeah, it uh, is getting dark. It's actually time for dinner almost. Yes. So you will. You have to let to to. to I have to let you tell us your final remarks and um. Yeah, and but I up, hope we covered yeah. everything that was on your schedule. Because yes, we did. Based That's on what did. you sent me, we've covered everything. Yeah, um, yeah. I just want to thank everyone who tuned in and to let you know if you have any more yoga related questions or anything that you learn you want to learn about next week on Friday, which is my birthday. I'm having wow. a yoga workshop called the Find Your Flow Yoga Workshop. It's mostly for people who are new to yoga. We are going to be talking about all these things like how to be able to practice yoga by yourself at home. We will do the asana movement. Then we'll talk about, about the breathing, about the meditation, you know, how to leverage this, this whole practice of yoga to your benefit. So I hope you can all join me. It's going to cost um, $20 if you want to pay in dollars. If you want to pay in Chile, it's 75,000 and it's 800 rupees. So just send me a message and I'll let you know how to join. And on that money, you also get 10 videos from my Safari album. The Safari album is a collection of 10 videos that I shot in Lake Mburo National Park while on Safari. And it's all about yoga, like yoga for the hip opening, for the chest, for the legs, the hamstrings, meditation, breathing practices, all this stuff in 10 videos, well-guided videos. Also, you have giraffe backdrops and elephants because it was in a national park. Sorry, not elephants, zebras. So yeah, I hope you can join me. And if you have any more questions on this, my Instagram is Okay.
available. Yeah, I'll share I'll share your your handle in my in my description so that whoever is not whoever has missed this or it wasn't clear to them, they can perhaps get in touch with you and maybe answer more questions. Talking about, do you have a website where people can find you? No, for now I don't have a okay. website. I'm thinking of starting a website again, but maybe something to tap into next year. For now, no, just oh. Instagram and yeah. So otherwise, it's really getting dark. I want to thank you yeah. for the invitation. I mean, thank um, you so much. And it's it's been fun. like on a short notes, but you are able to, to make yeah. it. I really appreciate you for that. Thanks for all the good information. And guys, go to her channel, support her, and um, connect with her. Yes, and we learn guys, from her. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, have a good night. Peace. My love to you. Oh, she's a